Welcome to Finite Element Tutorials. Today we'll be discussing how to perform a heat transfer transit analysis where the conditions are varying over time. The boundary conditions such as film coefficient and temperature, air temperature, could vary as a function of time. So for that, I'm going to have Bolian walk us through this tutorial. Hi everyone, I'm Bolian. In today's Abcus tutorial, I'm going to show you how to solve the heat transfer problem with the transient process. So before we're doing the problem, we need to know what, it, what are the settings of this problem. So we have a cork and steel elements in a vehicle. Once we launch the vehicle, the air could be uh, the air will be heated up. And once the air will be uh, where air is heat heated, the heat will transfer to the cork. And after the cork is heated, the, the heat will transfer from the cork to the steel. So the purpose of this problem is we want to make sure that the steel, the temperature of steel will not exceed 120 Celsius. So which means we need to control the thickness of the cork to make sure the highest temperature of the steel will not exceed will not exceed the 120 Celsius. And we have all the information, all the parameters of cork and steel above. We have the initial temperature is 25 Celsius before launch, and we do not want, and the steel is 40 for the conductivity, and the specific heat is 500 joules per kilograms. It should not be mid M kilograms Celsius. And the density of cork is within 300 and 350 kilograms per cubic meter. Thermal conductivity is 0 0.06. And specific heat here, the kilojoules should be converted to joules. So we need to times 1,000 to 2.5, which is 2,500. And the air the air heat transfer coefficient, which is the convection coefficient, is a function of time, and I will show later. And also, the recovery temperature is also a function of time. So, because the convection coefficient and the temperature are some functions of time, so we have to define the amplitude in abacus to helping us to solve this problem. And in this model, I assume that we have the 10 centimeter thick for the cork and steel elements, and six centimeter for the cork, four for the steel, four for the steel. And this is our H coefficient. So the figure one is the heat transfer coefficient. We use the blue the envelope curve to represent the H. When doing this problem, we need to convert all the units. We need to keep all the units consistent. I select to convert the English, English units into the metric units, which I pick six points to represent this plus. And I suggest you do select more points to more points than me to describe this plus since with the more points, you can get more perfect fit. And for the recovery temperature, I select the 14 points to represent it. Same thing with the H convection coefficient. I suggest you select more points to describe this one. But for this tutorial, I want to make everything simple. So I just select the six point and 14 points here. I think it's quite enough to describe this shape. And I already convert Fahrenheit into Celsius. Also, I convert this units into the metric unit. So let's start abacus. So first of all, we need to create a part. So we need to create a steel. We rename it a steel cork part. We use 2D planer. We set up our approximate size is one centimeter, 0 0.01. Click on continue. So, we, uh, since the shape of the 
cork and steel elements is like a, a similar to a rectangular. So I will build a, a, a rectangle to represent this element and doing a partition in the middle, in some part in the middle to separate this element into the cork and the steel part. So click on create rectangulars. First of all, set up our origin, it's 0, 0.0 and enter x and y. I want 10 centimeters thick, which is 0.1 meter, and I want one meter length. Click on enter, click on down, and then we have our elements. As I said before, we need to create a partition. So by creating the partition, we need to create the datum plane. So click on datum plane, we select XZ plane. It's from this line and this line. It goes up along the Y axis. XZ plane offset. So our thickness is 10 centimeter, which is 0.1 meter. If we want to make sure the cork is six centimeter thick, I should pick offset as 0.04. And now we have our datum plane and create a partition. Click on create partition, use face, use datum plane, click on the datum plane, create partition, click on down. So now we have separated the elements into two parts. Then move on to the property. We create our materials. First one, I create steel. I use 7850 for steel density and thermal conductivity is 40. Specific heat is 500. So you can check it in the, you can check it in the problem here. It's 40, 500. So click on okay. Create another material called cork. General density, I choose to use 300. And conductivity is 0.06. Specific heat, now convert kilojoules into joules, so 2,500. After creating, after creating two materials, we need to create two sections corresponding to the, those materials. First one is steel, select steel. And second one is cork. It's plain, it's in plain, so cork. So after creating this one, you can check in model tree. You can check the model tree to make sure everything is correct. You can, you can right click and edit to see, okay, cork is corresponding to material cork. It's correct. Then we assign the sections. So, and check the create set. Select the lower parts, click on down. Select the steel, click OK. Select the top part, down, cork, click OK. So you have assigned all the sections, all, uh, you have assigned the material to all the sections. Now we need to create an instance. Independent, apply. The next is to create the steps. So we, we name it as transient of these steps. It's after the initial. Select the heat transfer, click on continue. So the time period, you can, we can check the recovery temperature. The maximum time we're given is 150. So we select use 150. Increment from one to 150. Change the maximum number to 150. We set maximum allowable temperature change is five. Make sure it's transient, click on okay. And you can check your steps here. Then, we need to create an interaction to, them, uh, to show the convection from the outside air. So create interaction. Name is transient. Steps at, at transient. Select the surface film condition. Click on continue. Select the top surface. Since we consider this is a 1D problem, we only assumed the heat resources is coming from the top. So only select the top surface, click on down. And now 
is, <coughs> is the challenging part of this problem. Because our convection coefficient and sink temperature is a variable, it's a function of time, so we have to create an amplitude. So click on create amplitude. Name is H convection. We select the tabular. The tabular will allow you to have a table of time and amplitude. When you enter the value of your time with the value of your amplitude, the abacus will draw a Abacus will have some linear implementation in his default. So Abacus will know what's the shape of this curve. Click on OK. And remember to switch instantaneous to H convection and put a multiplier as one here. And same thing for the sink te temperature. We click on create amplitude. We, we let the name is as re recovery temperature. Same use tabular. I suggest you to summarize all your data before you doing this amplitude in, uh, in the Excel sheet because you can just copy and paste. Click on OK. Select to the recovery temperature. Put the multiplier as one as well here. OK, click on OK. You can see there's a small square appears on the top surface, which means you have successfully made the amplitude. So before doing load, let's do the mesh. And before doing mesh, remember to change the element type into heat transfer. Heat transfer, click on OK, click on down. And also you can change the mesh into the structured. Click on down. So since I use the student version in my desktop, I just want to give you a tutorial so I don't use another version. So our my node is restricted uh, is a restri a restricted within 1000 nodes. But when you're doing your problem, I suggest you use more than 1000 nodes so that you can get a more clear result. But this time, I, on, I want to make sure the nodes, the nodes number is within 1,000 nodes. So I just set up as 0 0.002. And about the size, I just use the geometry to define, determine the size. Because uh, after we doing the simulation, we want, we want to see the temperature distribution clearly in the cork and in the steel. So I want to use some integer number of elements to represent the cork. And same thing for the steel. So I select to divide the y-axis into five parts. So top three for the cork, bottom two for the steel. So I just put this number to divide everything to, to divide this line into five one. Sorry. Click on OK, see the mesh. You can see the top three mesh elements represent the cork, and the bottom two represent the steel. And since we need to define the initial condition at every node of this element, so we create set. We switch, we name it as initial temperature. Switch to nodes, continue. Select all the nodes, click on down, and you can see the set here, I think. Okay, anyway, you can check your set in the manager here. Just type his node, and then we go back to load. Since we do not have any in input, we only have some initial condition, so we only need to use the create predefined field. Click on create predefined field. Rename it as initial temperature. Step is not transient, it's initial. Select temperature, continue. So we're doing select the sets in the right bottom corner. Click on set, 
slack initial temperature continue. Give the value of magnitude is 25 Celsius. You can see all the nodes has the initial temperature. Then we check our mesh, everything is good. Create our job, it's okay. Submit it. So you can see it's completed successfully. So click on results, select the nodal temperature. You can see at the top surface of our of top surface of our of our cork has some the temperature distribution, and when it goes to uh, when it goes down, and the temperature will goes lower. So, which means this thickness is still large. So, it's better for you to shrink your size, shrink your thickness to find where it is the exact thickness of your, you know, of the real cork, to, uh, of the cork that you can make sure the temperature of steel will not exceed 120 Celsius. So, we can use tools, query node probe values we can select switch elements to nodes we can see the, some temperature of the top surface of steel we we'll click on this it's still 25 celsius which means the heat cannot pass through the cork so which means our cork is too thick and if we check the temperature at the bottom of first row of this element is 26 celsius and if we check the top, it's 132 Celsius. So this model, we still uh, we have a really thick thickness of uh, cork for this model. But for your, but this is some inspiration to you to help you to find the thick, the real thickness of the cork. And we also can check some plots. Get ODB field output, click on continue. We select the unique nodal. You can see the temperature distribution. Select the nodal temperature. Goes to elements nodes, edit selection. We select the top one, plot, and you can see the transient process of the temperature change. So that be all that'll be all for this tutorial. And hopefully, hopefully this tutorial will help you to find the real thickness of the cork to make the steel, the top surface lower than 120 Celsius. Obviously, this thickness is good enough to minimum, uh, to make sure to lower the temperature than 120 Celsius, but it's not the best. So maybe play with the thickness of the cork and make sure that everything is entered when everything in the steel is under at 120 Celsius.